Yep. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, first off, bow staff basics. This is what I call the grips, and I have short names for them. Number one, this is called your thirds or your mid-range grip. You're gonna hold your bow staff so that this amount of wood, the amount of wood in between my hands, and this amount of wood is equal. So you're holding it in thirds. Your right hand is like a muscle, and your left hand is like a punch. When you do mid-range, you never switch your hands. You just stay like this, because we fight this way. We'll strike on top, we'll strike on top, we'll strike this way. Notice my hands never change. We keep a tight grip, all the strikes are that way. You never slide your hand or anything like that, it just stays the same. So as a student's doing the strikes, we always gotta make sure that those, those uh, hands end up on the same. So like, if it's this way and they start to get close together, the closer the hands are together, the less control, but the more speed. The farther they are apart, the more uh, control you have and the less speed. So we wanna find a balance by holding it right in the middle. So that's the mid-range grip. Now if I take these hands exactly the same the way they are, one's down and one's up, and slide to the end, so this is about a fist length away from the tip, and then my hand, about right here, it's close to the middle, but really, it's shoulder width wide. I have a lot more stick on one side, so that's the side I'd strike with. This allows me to hit from longer uh, distance away. So if we had someone who was using a bow staff against someone that was using nunchucks, we would wanna be long range because that person can strike from farther away like they're a sniper. So they can hit from farther away and choose that target, maybe hit them in the hands to knock the nunchucks out and then be able to go to mid range so that they can speed up a little bit. So when we have this long range grip and one is over and one's under, that's called the battery grip, you get it? positive and negative, the battery grip. This one's really weird. We do switch hands when we want to strike. So if it's this side, we'll go here. And then when we do the other hand, we actually have to open our hand. And you know, when you get faster, just loosen your grip. We open our hand and we don't grab it. You would actually switch your grip just like this. So you switch your grip this way and you grab. So you do the strikes here. Switch your grip, 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 do the strikes here. So that's called the battery grip long range. Kind of like that is the double over mid range, or long range, double over long range. That just means both hands are over. Now, the difference is it's really gonna be a preference type of thing. So if someone wants to, to spar, they may use this one. This one makes it really powerful with your, with your thrusts, and a lot of the strikes are gonna be more of a downward motion or a twisting of really putting your body into it. So I feel like I have more speed with the battery grip, but a lot more power with the double over. So in the form, I wanted to combine mid-range, uh, battery grip long range, and the double over long range, so all students get a chance to do it all to understand the weapons better. So um, anytime you hit something, the different grip you have, that's gonna depend on how much power you have and your range too. So this is just a quick overview of all of the grips. Okay, so the beginning of the form goes like this. We're gonna start with our hand in the mid-range grip. We start off that way. So the student will start like this. The right hand will be in position. So the left hand will just go like this when they're ready to strike. They're gonna tuck that under their armpit, step their right foot forward, and put the left hand on their ribs. Grab underneath, so that now I'm at mid-range. Grab underneath. The right hand comes around your head. Your right foot's in front, and you strike across. So this strike, hit someone in the ribs or in the head, but it went from my right to my left. Then I come across this way, and the stick hits the pad of my shoulder. Now I tuck this one under that same arm, and I would conk down on someone's head. That would be segment one. Now the next segment is a manipulation. I'm gonna slide the staff so that my hand's in the middle. Turn my body to the side, left hand up. I let this side pass, and this side goes in, and I go until my thumb's pointed down. I keep going until both thumbs are up. I grab, come out, grab this side, and hit down on top of that person's head. That's segment one and two. So let's break down that manipulation a little bit. First thing, left hand on top like this. I'm gonna put my right hand like a punch. Left hand on top of it. My right hand stays on the bottom and my left hand always stays on the top. This is called the butterfly spin. I'm gonna let the first one pass, and this one kind of rolls up my thumb and it's delivered right into my hand here. So this is why it's called butterfly, because it makes that little um, silhouette like when you're playing with flashlights in the dark. And I go like this, and then I'm gonna go all the way to 
the left hand as it punches, okay? Now we can add some cool things like if I take that left hand and go thumbs down, go behind my back, thumbs touch each other, I can come out with the right hand and it's like I started over again. So left is on top, it's delivered into my hand, thumb down, come behind my back, thumbs touch each other, and I come back out. So that's a cool way just to do a butterfly behind the back. The other thing is called the butterfly continuous spin. Left hand on top, skip the first one, it delivers into my hand, and remember the right one stays on the bottom, left one stays on the top. Left goes all the way till your thumb points down, and then just rotate this hand till your thumb points down, and it comes back up, and that's how you start it. Left on top, skip, deliver, skip, deliver. That's how you start it again. Skip, deliver, skip, deliver. Skip, deliver, skip, deliver. Skip, deliver, skip, deliver. Now I'm going too fast to say it. But if you can stick to those techniques, my hands, you notice, don't really do very much. And it allows the bow staff to spin really fast. So if you break down that technique, even though you're slow at first, if you break it down and really try to get it, it's gonna make the spin faster in the end. Now let's talk about this manipulation. It's kind of like the around the back part. So what we're gonna do is start this way. We have our right hand like a punch. Left hand is on top. I skip it and deliver it. And instead of putting the bow staff behind my back, I put behind my back to the bow staff. So I'm gonna go all the way down, thumbs down, and I just twist my feet. I don't pick them up, I just twist. And I keep it turning until my thumb's up. Then I grab underneath, so my thumb's up too. I keep spinning the same direction, bring my bow staff out so that it still spins the same way. As it goes, I'm trying to hit you down on top of the head, but I get my other hand in just for reinforcement, and then you come down. Try to guess what grip this is. Can you guess what it is? Number eight strike. So, the manip manipulation goes into the left hand, turn your body by twisting your feet, both thumbs are up behind the back. Turn, bam, on top of the head. So you're gonna turn, left hand catches. I come behind my back, bam, on top of the head like this. All right, so practice it slow and do it as many times as you can until you can go fast. The goal is to be smooth. Even if you're slow, be smooth and then build up the speed. Anytime you're like, like this, You're never going to get faster. So the best thing to do is to practice it slow, kind of like this. Now if I can make that smooth technique fast, I'll look like a rock star. So that's segment one and two of the bow step form. Practice that. The rest of the form, it's all fun. It's just a lot of strikes and cool combos. So we'll be hitting the wave masters and practicing with our friends. It'll be really cool. So practice that part. And once you have that, the hard part's behind us.